Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday and a great weekend so far. In this video, we're really going to talk about the cold shot, well, reinforcing cold shot of cold air that's going to be really moving into portions of the eastern U.S. over the next 24 to 48 hours. It's going to be very cold temperatures for late March standard. So we're going to talk about who can get it. We're going to talk about who can continue to see some snow over the next 24 hours for certain areas of the country. You know, it's been crazy weather today for portions of the Ohio Valley. We've seen snow squalls. It's been crazy. They've been seeing it last night also. So, you know, we're not, we're not completely done with winter weather. It still tends to lag around too long often. And sometimes we can get some crazy weather in April as far as winter weather also. So we're going to give you an update on what's going on. There is still a big time fire danger. Uh, very dry temperatures out there. A lot of red flag warnings. So we're going to talk briefly on that and talk about what the temperatures look like as far as how cold it could potentially get. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way. Uh, we're going to continue to talk about the severe weather chances for this coming week tomorrow. We're really going to start to uh, narrow down on it and try to figure out what's going to happen, especially as we get into the short-range convective models. So if you guys got anything I can pray about, please put it in the comments below so we can all pray for one another. And look out for one another doing it. So let's get going here. So right now, these are temperatures. You can obviously tell where a gradient is setting up. A temperature gradient is what I mean. What I mean here. You got temperatures in the 70s and 80s down here in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, you know, kind of in the 50s and 60s, right in between the boundary. And then you're pretty much locked into winter right now. And these are actually people's personal weather stations. So these are. Um, actually weather stations just chilling in people's front yard, backyard, a business, whatever it may be. But it's really cold across areas of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. And you have on and off snow squalls moving through this area. And uh, it's been very windy across the Carolinas where there's red flag warnings. And I'll show you that here in a second. And a big time uh, fire risk going on. So do not burn anything really across the entire central part of the country and eastern part of the country. I would not burn anything. It's just there's a uh, um, I definitely a system around that's creating a lot of winds and there's a lot of dry air. The dew points are very low in a lot of areas. So let's check out the satellite and what is going on. You can tell this little spin right here. It's firing off some convective energy. So it's snow squalls, but they're convective in nature. So you might hear a crack of thunder with this, especially last night you heard that. It was pretty wild. Other than that, it's a, it's a pretty day. It's just very windy. And um, some very dry air has settled into a large portion of the eastern U.S. Therefore, those windy conditions and very dry air dew points in the teens in certain areas, single digits for areas, um, you're going to have a big time fire risk. You know, with the winds, uh, it completely dries everything out. It doesn't matter if you had rain a few days ago. When the air is just that dry, it dries everything out very quickly. So it creates a big time fire risk. So let's keep going here and you'll see this, everything in that bright pink color, some might call that purple, that is red flag warning. So those are the areas where you really do not need to burn anything. There's a big time risk for fire. It can happen quick. Um, it's pretty much inevitable. In fact, I think areas uh, just west of Myrtle Beach are reporting a big time fire right now. I'm not talking about a wild, crazy wildfire that's engulfing towns or anything right now like that but uh, there is a big time fire risk now there is evacuations ongoing on some of those front range cities I, I saw somebody tweet about it just a while ago where they're having to evacuate i think 1200 people because of a raging wildfire this thing got kick start on one of these front range towns i think it might have been boulder don't hold me to that but the, the fire risk is a big deal even here in texas it's a big deal because a lot of these areas that um, saw moisture and saw rain well, a lot of areas in central and western, west central areas of Texas did not see that moisture from that last system that promoted all them tornadoes. So what's going on right now where you continue through the overnight hours, you're still going to have snow squalls moving through areas of Ohio, P the PA, um, Indiana, West Virginia, where you actually have some winter storm warnings up for the very highest elevations. This will continue until tomorrow morning. In fact, maybe areas in New York City, southern New England, and definitely interior, the entire state of New York could probably definitely see some snow squalls, especially northern PA also. But the entire northeast, snow squalls are definitely around. Not every uh, snow uh, shower is going to be a snow squall necessarily, but it's going to be kind of squally weather here with a powerful, potent cold front that's only kind of ejecting itself across a very small portion of the country as far as hitting it head on. It's moving across this area. It's pumping out lake effect snow across areas of the Great Lakes as the lakes are basically starting to thaw out now, so you don't have as much ice on the lakes, 
Therefore, the lake effect snow bands could get kicked off again. Once those lakes really freeze over, the lake effect snow machine really starts to shut down because it's not able to move over those warmer waters to create more moisture. So going on here, we can check, check it, take a look here at troughs and ridging, and you can tell what's going on here. This is for tomorrow morning. We keep going on, and another big-time trough eject itself across the northeast. So basically, if you're in the Carolinas, the southeast, winds will be out the northeast and probably pulling in some very cool air. But the, fur the further west you go, the more you get influenced by ridging, not so much troughing. But the further north e northeast you go and east you go, the more you're influenced by this cold front. So it's kind of a weird setup. It's not a wholesale cold front where you got a cold front moving in from the Midwest and just clashing across the entire eastern U.S. It's really just ejecting itself across. Basically, it's basically a piece of the volt polar vortex kind of slamming the northeast. So you're going to have bitterly cold temperatures for late March standards. And I'll talk about how cold it can get right now. So this is for tomorrow morning. Not crazy bad, but you're going to have a widespread freeze all the way down to portions of the higher elevations of North Georgia. Maybe even, uh, you know, some uh, this possible that you could freeze in areas of Alabama, Tennessee, especially central to eastern parts of Tennessee. Definitely a freeze. Most of Kentucky is going to be below freezing when y'all waking up tomorrow morning. And then basically everybody you see in this blue below freezing, very cold, low 20s in the Ohio Valley. But then as you keep going tomorrow, potential high temperatures, a chilly winter like day up here in the Ohio Valley. The Northeast, you know, if you're a little bit closer to the coastal regions where the reinforcing cold front has not quite moved through, you warm into the 40s and maybe 30s, which is still very cold for late March standards. But you keep going, and this is when the cold really starts to move in. This is for your Monday morning to start out your work week. You're, you're frigid. I mean, you're pretty cold all the way into the I-95 corridor across the Northeast. But just inland, you're well into the teens, maybe even single digits. And then you're really froze up across the Ohio Valley waking up. But this is potential high temperatures. Boston, um, maybe even Cleveland, Detroit, you know, the entire the entire Northeast may not get above freezing. New York City might not get above freezing uh, Monday, but, you know, it's going to be close. Just inland will be much more colder. But you can already see the temperatures begin to moderate way out here. It's basically a big time ridge. Is about to pop off here and then another cold shot might end up setting up for the beginning of april so i have to watch that but really going forward here i think the coldest night for the northeast is going to be tuesday it's going to be monday night into tuesday morning where i think there'll be widespread teens showing up here in very cold temperatures now you know it was looking a lot colder for areas of the carolinas down here in the southeast for your monday morning and i think I, i'll be a lot of widespread 30s even outside the mountains but i don't think, I think it'll be near as bad but you start to moderate temperature wise going forward into about midweek you start to get into the 60s and 70s so temperatures begin to rebound as you get into midweek ahead of a big time system that's going to promote likely a severe weather outbreak but going forward here temperatures compared to average we're getting into sunday tomorrow for highs much of the eastern u.s below average temperature wise i'm talking five to as much as 15 degrees below average which you know for a lot of these areas your average highs are probably well into the 50s and 60s so um it's going to be chilly you know the start of work week also we're getting into monday well below average across the northeast these are anomalies temperatures compared to average so very cold temperatures uh, to start out your work week for sure and we look at what's going on going forward here you can look at the next big system that starts to move in. You're getting into Wednesday. Here comes our system that moves through. We'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. We're going to know a lot more, I think, here in the next 24 hours. But there's still all, all, all things are still signaling for a very impactful storm system next week for sure. And you look at the Storm Prediction Center, you still get that 15% risk for your Tuesday. And then the 30% risk already hatched or already up for your um, Wednesday. So this is going to be a big deal, guys. So we'll talk a little bit more on this in the coming days. This is going to be the next big weather topic, but I did want to mention the cold temperatures expected over the next 48 hours. God bless everybody. Y'all have a great night.